The International Atheist Alliance is pleased to present a double header, two reports on some of the leading lights among political religionists, stars in the radical right firmament. Featuring Gene Hesberg, California Director of People for the American Way, and Jerry Sloan, Director of Project Toxin. Here is Ms. Hesberg at a forum organized by the American Jewish Congress. People for the American Way was founded in 1980 by Norman Lear and a group of concerned religious and civic leaders. In 1980, we were concerned about the moral majority. Today, we're concerned about a lot more than just the moral majority. We work to defend First Amendment freedoms, promote tolerance and diversity, and we work to fight against the religious right as it engages in what they call the culture war. We have 300,000 members nationwide with 40,000 here in California, and our home office is in Washington, D.C. California is a regional offices, office with four more regional offices across the country. I have been asked to briefly, and it's very brief, go over a few areas which include who the major players are on the religious right, what their main issues are, and how we can all fight back in our local communities and win. So let me start with the major players. By far the most powerful group on the religious right is the Christian Coalition, which actually represents only one part of Pat Robertson's empire. The Robertson Empire includes the Christian Broadcasting Network, CBN, and the Family Channel, which currently reaches over 60 million homes. It also includes Regent University, located in Virginia, and the legal arm of the Christian Coalition, the American Center for Law and Justice. The Christian Coalition has a $50 million annual operating budget. The Christian Coalition has two main goals. The first is the complete takeover of the Republican Party apparatus. And the second goal is to win elections at the local and state levels and then at the federal levels. Currently, they claim over 1.7 million members. I don't know if you're going to talk about that claim being disputed at all. We'll just say 1.7 million members right now. And they have established over 2,000 local chapters in 50 states. They claim to have taken over 19 state Republican Central Committees so far. Ralph Reed, in a recent speech, estimated that the Christian Coalition will mail out this year 45 million voter guides in the coming months and make over 2 million telephone calls to get out the vote. We documented the success of these voter guides, People for the American Way did, in, an, in 1994 in a report entitled A Turn to the Right. And we report that almost every member of the Republican House and Senate leadership team, every member except one, received a 100% voting record from the Christian Coalition, which meant that, according to the Christian Coalition, they agreed with those leadership members 100% of the time. Let me go over a couple other important national groups. Citizens for Excellence in Education, which is located here in Costa Mesa, California, is headed by a man by the name of Robert Simons. They have 1,700 chapters nationwide, claiming a membership of over 20 or 250,000 people. CEE published a manual entitled How to Elect Christians to Public Office and now claims to have helped over 12,000 Christian fundamentalists get elected to school boards across the country. CEE's radio program, Issues in Education, is heard on 53 stations in 26 states, and their goal is to gain religious right control of every school district in the country. Concerned Women for America, founded in 1979 in San Diego, California, by Beverly, he Beverly LaHaye claims a membership of over 600,000 people with 1,200 chapters across the country. CWA is anti-gay, anti-choice, anti-sex education. They oppose the National Endowment for the Arts, and they have been leaders in the fight against comprehensive sexuality education. They oppose anti-drug and alcohol abuse programs, and they oppose self-esteem programs in public classrooms. This, I'll get to why, too, in a minute. The state groups monitor state, state legislation, organize prayer action, action chapters, and coordinate CWA's grassroots congressional lobbying program. CWA's daily 
30-minute radio show, Beverly LaHaye Live, reaches an estimated audience of over 750,000 people. This is a quote by Beverly LaHaye. Yes, religion and politics do mix. America is a nation based on biblical principles. Christian values dominate our government. The test of those values is the Bible. Politicians who do not use the Bible to guide their public and private lives do not belong in office. The next group is the Eagle Forum, and that was founded in 1972 by Phyllis Schlafly. Oh, my <laughs> Eagle, <laughs> Eagle Forum has a membership of over 80,000 people, and Schlafly writes a syndicated column which appears in newspapers across the country. Her radio commentaries are heard on over 250 radio stations across the country as well. Eagle Forum opposes the Equal Rights Amendment, abortion rights, AIDS education, comprehensive sex education, again, self-esteem programs, funding for the NEA, and federal support for daycare and family leave. Schlafly founded the Republican National Coalition for Life in 1990 and was a driving force behind the Republican Party's strict anti-choice platform. She will be a fixture again at this year's National Republican Convention in San Diego, again driving the anti-choice platform. Now this is my personal favorite quote by Phyllis Schlafly, and this is on sexual harassment. If there's no proof, it's all in your mind. How about that, Irwin? <laughs> Focus on the Family is led by James Dobson and is located in Colorado Springs, Colorado. FOF is the radio equivalent of Pat Robertson's TV empire, and it appears on over 2,500 radio stations daily. FOF is one of the largest religious right organizations with an annual budget of over $150 million. Dobson recently expanded his headquarters to a new 47-acre complex, which houses up to 5,000 employees. He established the Family Research Council, which is headed by Gary Bauer. Family Research Council calls itself a pro-family think tank and is located in Washington, D.C., and it is main goal is to lobby members of Congress. Focus advocates teaching biblical creationism in science classrooms, they were a huge supporter, both financially and organizationally, of Colorado's anti-gay Amendment 2 campaign, and they conduct political training seminars around the country aimed at getting evangelical Christians elected to public office. The last group I'll go over is the Traditional Values Coalition, located right here in, Cal in California, in Anaheim, California, and it's headed by Lou Sheldon. TVC includes 15,000 churches worldwide, with 7,800 here in California. Over the last year, Sheldon, with the help of Washington, D.C. lobbying office, has worked most closely with the congressional leadership in providing the idea and information on congressional hearings on the supposed pro-homosexual agenda in public schools. He is the father of the anti-gay initiative, and each year threatens to place one on California's ballot. Now let me just uh, go over some names of some legal organizations uh, of the religious right, um, because uh, these organizations were formed in an effort to accomplish the sectarian mission through the courts. The Rutherford Institute is a Virginia-based legal organization founded in 1982 by biblical law advocate John Whitehead. Whitehead says this, the public education structure, which includes the entire educational structure up through the university level, must be reinstalled with Christian theism. The Rutherford Institute has been very active here in California, and I have butted heads with them over many, many issues, most notably sexuality education and educational reform, the class test, the California Language Assessment Survey exam last year or two years ago. Other legal organizations include the U.S. Justice Foundation, the Western Center for Law and Religious Freedom, and again, the American Center for Law and Justice. Let me go over a couple of hot button issues. There have been many, many battles over education reform initiatives, one called outcome-based education. You may have heard this one already. 
Simply put, outcome-based education is a new theory in education that seeks to measure how a child is performing in school by, um, by uh, recognizing a certain number of outcomes that that child must accomplish before they graduate. And Goals 2000, a program started by President Bush and continued by President Reagan, is also under attack because, and you may have heard about the attacks on Goals 2000 education. Religious right groups claim these programs are big brother-like. They promote new age religions, they promote homosexuality, they undercut parental authority because they teach children to think critically. Now that's a direct argument against the California Language Assessment Survey exam. I kid you not, when I testified in Sacramento, that is what the Eagle Forum testified about. This test teaches our children to think critically. That's why they were opposed to it. Battles in California nationwide over the teaching of comprehensive sexuality education curriculum are particularly important among religious right groups. Religious right groups, most notably the Eagle Forum, again, claims that teaching children comprehensive sexuality education, comprehensive meaning abstinence-based, but also talking about other issues such as birth control and sexually transmitted diseases, promotes somehow sex. Therefore, their idea is to remove, remove entirely sex education from our public schools. We have a report entitled Teaching Fear, People for the American Way Does, which documents the history of the attacks on sexuality education over the last several years. Religious right groups also target self-esteem and drug counseling programs, as I said, claiming they too undermine parental authority and somehow promote new age religions. Self-esteem programs that use, um, there's one, Pumsy the Dragon, that uses a little uh, handheld uh, puppet for elementary school kids. Uh, the religious right claims that that hypnotizes children and therefore promotes them into a new age theology. Religious right groups have targeted anything which mentions homosexuality without condemning it. Other items on the religious right agenda include prayer in public schools, instituting the teaching of creationism in public school science curricula, school vouchers which would supply public funds for private religious schools, anti-gay statewide initiatives, and constructing federal and state barriers to reproductive freedom. Those are just a few of the big ones. So what can we do? Very quickly, what can we do? I did have 12 ways to fight back, but 12 turned into 14, which turned back to 10, and now I don't say any number at all. So these are several ways to fight back and win. <laughs> First is to identify your allies. There are many organizations and individuals out there who would love to work with you to fight back. So first, find out in your community who you can work with. Parents groups, librarians and library associations. Libraries are constantly under attack. Video and software dealers, artists and art groups, gay and lesbian organizations, mainstream clergy and other religious organizations, democratic clubs and moderate Republican clubs, reproductive choice advocates, civil rights, teachers, environmental, women's groups, labor groups, the list goes on and on. So the more we band together, the better off we are. And remember two special allies, parents. Parents groups and uh, moderate or religious clergy. Parents groups because they are often the most effective groups to work with when you're, when you're countering attacks in public education. And uh, religious clergy because uh, then we can, uh, so to speak, fight fire with fire. Get your own ducks in a row. In schools, for example, make sure the censorship policy is in place before there's any trouble. In your children's school, ask, ask the school board if they have a policy in place uh, in which a parent can go through steps when they complain or they, they object to reading material. There ought to be a policy that's fair for everybody. Oftentimes, schools are caught unprepared, and that's why the religious right can win. Know the enemy. Research the groups. We, People for the American Way, can provide background on many national and local groups, as can other organizations around. AJ Congress, also Jerry Sloan, has a wonderful research library. Uh, contact other groups for help. And get help from people who have faced these battles before. Uh, it's really important to contact those in your community. Reach out, Michael in Ventura or uh, Barbara Donovan in Vista. There are many people that we can hook you up with who know shortcuts, what worked for them and what didn't work for them. Get the facts out. We have the advantage of being right. They're wrong. 
a lot of times. Sexuality education has not proved to promote sex. Creationism in public schools, creation is religion. It doesn't belong in public schools. We are right, so it's important for us to get the facts out. And avoid jargon. Don't use buzzwords. The reason I maintain that outcome-based education has been successfully undermined by the Eagle Forum, it's because nobody knows what outcome-based education, OBE, is. Let's not use OBE. We'll explain it better if we, if we just use a couple more words. Organize, organize, organize. They do it with phone trees and mailings and meetings. We should do the same thing. As Reverend Edgar was saying, they've out-hustled us. We need to out-hustle them. And take them seriously. They won't just go away, and there rarely is compromising on certain issues. Do take it seriously when you hear one person in your community trying to promote creationism in your child's public school. It's not just happenstance that that person is standing up. Take it seriously and uh, do something about it. Last but not least, never least, vote. That bears repeating, vote. The ballot box determines our future. And now we continue with Mr. Jerry Sloan. Project Toxin was started in 1991. The word toxin is an alarm signal. It's a warning of danger. And uh, we started after the San Diego Surprise in 1990, realizing that the religious right was going to start reaching out all across the state, uh, looking at uh, local level offices, at school boards, and city councils, and so on. But as we reached out to other little grassroots groups that were around the state, they were constantly calling us and saying, well, you're in Sacramento, that's where all the reports are. Would you go down and look up this or look up that for them? And we were happy to do that. And in doing so, then, it kind of put us on the trail, on the money trail of where the money was coming from. And, and as we started looking at where the money was coming from and who these people were, we also then started to look at where they came from <laughs> and uh, how some of this came about here in California. Nowhere else in the, in the country is there an assault on democracy as there is here in California. And it's being primarily conducted by five families. Five families. Extremely wealthy and extremely theocratic in their thoughts. Back in 1987, there was an organization, most of you have a chart in your packet there. If you'll get that out, we'll, we'll give you the 25 cent tour real quick. <laughs> this is about the, I think, third version of this chart that I've put out since 1992. And we're ready to, to revise it again and, and start. But in 1987, here in the middle, you'll see a, a, a line that says Capital Resource Institute. And in 1987, Howard Amundsen, Rob Hurt, Preston Hawkins, and uh, uh, Henderson, um, Peter, Peter Henderson, started this group called the Capital Resource Institute. As um, Jean mentioned a minute ago, Focus on the Family has, has their uh, policy, what they call their policy organization in DC. Well, one of the things that they started doing early on was they started doing these little state groups. And you know what? Nobody knew they were doing it. They were just out there opening up these little policy institutes around various states. They now have 35 of these policy institutes in 35 states. But after they started the policy institute, they kind of realized that, gee, it's not just enough to lobby. We're not getting anywhere lobbying. Uh, we don't have a majority. And so they decided it's, that they had to set about a plan to change the legislature. And that's exactly what they did. Now, over here under the Allied Business Pack, we have these men listed. 
And the top, top guy is Howard Amundsen, Jr. Now, Howard Amundsen, Jr. is the heir to the home savings and loan fortune. Um, Howard, when his father died, had a great deal of difficulty accepting his father's death and, and kind of, for a few years, kind of banged around the country in an old Toyota, going to several schools and so on. And he became converted to fundamentalist Christianity and attended the Mariner's Church uh, in Orange County. And as the story goes, one day a group, somebody came to him and wanted to make a donation to some missionary cause. And um, he wasn't quite sure whether he wanted to make that donation. And the people came back to him and said, now, if you don't give him that money, then the souls of all those people, this good old fundamentalist guilt, then the souls of all those people that, that these missionaries would reach, their blood is going to be on your hands. So Howard promptly went out and became a Calvinist. And for those of you who may not know what Calvinism is, Calvinism tells us that God ordains people to salvation, that in the, in the first place, everybody's going to hell. And so those that... God has ordained will make it to heaven, and the rest it really doesn't make any difference about. So Howard soothed his conscience by, by becoming a Calvinist, and, and then later on uh, came under the influence of a man by the name of R.J. Rush Dooney, a Presbyterian minister who has written numerous books, was a fellow traveler of Robert Welch and, and a fellow associate with Robert Welch and the John Birch Society. And in 1973, R.J. Rushdoony wrote a book. Actually, it's, uh, it's, two, it, it's two volumes. He, he wrote it over a period of years, but the first volume appeared in 1973. It's called The Institutes of Biblical Law. And in it, Rushdoony outlines how he thinks society should be run. And he believes that, society, that, that God, gave a, God gave the covenant to the Jews but because the Jews were disobedient and rejected Christ, that the covenant then was transferred to the church, and the church are the true inheritors of the covenant of God. And that the church has the right to rule the world, to take dominion over the world. And that's what these guys are setting out to do. So Howard, in 1987, teamed up with Rob Hurt and started this Capital Resource Institute. They soon learned, as I said, they couldn't get very far without a majority, so they set out to start gathering up people to run for the men, primarily, to run for the legislature and change the face of the California legislature. These ventures require bankrollers, such as Roland Hines, who publishes Dirt Bike Magazine. And while most of us probably are not into dirt biking and, and motocrossing, there are a lot of people that are, and they're very popular magazines, and they've made Mr. Hines a lot of money, and he has been putting that money into helping buy our legislature. The other fellow was a guy by the name of Edward Atzinger III. Now, Edward Atzinger III owns now, at the, at the time he didn't, but right now he owns 29 Christian radio stations around the country. He is the largest commercial uh, Christian television or Christian radio station owner in the country. Nobody comes close to him. Um, Mr. Atzinger is a graduate of Bob Jones University in Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, he went there. He, his partner Stuart Epperson went there. That's where they met. And then in 1993, they were joined by a, another gentleman, by the name of Richard Riddle who also went to Bob Jones University, graduated from there. These guys then have been pumping their money, selecting candidates, pumping their money into the legislature, and currently out of, out of the 41 Republicans that are in the, in the, and they've been primarily putting their money into, into Republican candidates up until just recently, um, 
they now have about 28 out of the 41 Republicans that they've helped elect in the, in the California Assembly. Now, that doesn't mean that every, every uh, person that they've helped elect is jot and tittle uh, with what they believe, but, but uh, they have financed the people that they, they feel are the most acceptable candidates for their agenda. One of the things that I also learned is in, in reading about R.J. Rushdoony and his, his philosophy and wanting to put us under this, this so-called biblical law that he's got, that in his society there are no prisons. No prisons. <laughs> you have only misdemeanors and capital crimes. That's right. And there are about 18 categories of capital crimes that he has. Uh, if you are, if you are, if you propagate a false religion, you are guilty of a, of a capital crime. You will be put to death. If you are a young woman and you have sex outside of marriage, you are guilty of a capital crime and you will be put to death. If you are a homosexual, you are guilty of a capital crime and you will be put to death. There, there is no room for, for anything but their, but their narrow beliefs. Too depressing to consider, too depressing to let happen. Forewarned is forearmed. Realization of this project was made possible by a generous grant from the James Hervey Johnson Charitable Educational Trust. This program was produced by the Atheist United TV Outreach Project team. Your comments and suggestions regarding our programming and inquiries about Atheist United are cordially invited. Write to Atheist United, Post Office Box 57435, Sherman Oaks, California, 91314, or call area code 818-785-1743.